performed at numerous Wee Days across North America and performed this morning with the Kenyan Boys Choir, and you all saw it, and it was wonderful. So please join me in welcoming Nellie Furtado. <laughs> Multiple times on the way of stage and hung out with us this summer in Africa. Hey everyone. Hello, how are you? Okay, so we can open the floor up to questions. Stephanie? Just right over here. Hey, there's a question. Oh, that's such a good question. The first time I went to Kenya, my heart cracked open because I just, I just was so inspired by the people. I was inspired by the families in the communities that I met. I was inspired by the teamwork uh, within the communities. I was inspired by the children that I met and the young teenage girls who were studying at Kisuruni High School. They had a lot of ambition and drive, and uh, a drive that I'd never seen before. Because myself, you know, as a teenager growing up in Canada, in Victoria, BC, um, you know, I liked school, but I, you know, it, it, it was a given, right? We all get to go to high school. So when I went to Kenya, I went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Over here, it's not a given. You have to, to have quite a lot of money to, to send your kids to high school. The government only pays for school up until grade eight. Okay, so. These girls, they get up at five in the morning, they clean their dorm, they start studying from six to seven a.m. First class is at, uh, you know, after breakfast, I think first class is like eight a.m. They study all day till about six p.m., extracurriculars till about nine p.m., and then they do it all again the next day. And they're thrilled to be there. They're excited. And so this, uh, I came back with this in, in, in uh, inspiration in my heart and, uh, just ever since, I yeah, I just, I, I go back, uh, I just got back from my third trip there. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just, I guess I want to point out how sustainable this work is with Free the Children. It's all about communities helping themselves. It's all about them kind of developing the skills and getting the education and uh, working together as communities to sort of thrive. And I was inspired by that. And so we started uh, partnering and doing stuff together and it's been a really fun, fun ride. I think we have a question right here. Craig, when did you and your brother decide, or why did you and your brother decide to call this event We Day? I've never received that question before. That's a good, great question. Why did we decide to call it We Day? Well, because we said it would be the answer to the question. And the question we were always asked by young people is of only one person, what difference can I make? And the whole idea is if I help you know, one person, or if I donate one hour, or if I give one dollar, or if I stand up one time against a bully, does that really make a difference? And so often we heard that question, of only one person, what difference can I make, that we wanted to put a day where all of us would come together to celebrate how we change the world. So that idea of we, and we day, and in fact, the whole idea was we can change the world day. So we called it We Day as part of that celebration. So We Day has stuck ever since. But thank you for the question. Great. We have another question just back there. I think there's two, right? <laughs> there's stuff. <Stephanie>. Okay. <laughs> this is a kind of a comparative question. But do you find that there is any difference in the level of acceptance for your volunteer of a man versus a woman when traveling into third world countries? Oh, that's such a good question. Wow. What's your name again? I met you earlier. Laura. Laura? Hi, Laura again. Mm -hmm. Um, geez, that's a good question because I'm sure a lot of youth are excited about traveling overseas on a meet a weed trip perhaps. A lot of them are fundraising and with this in mind and also um, just in general, um, wondering about the communities they are helping. Um, as a woman myself, I can answer from a woman's perspective. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, no, I didn't really notice a huge difference, I think, between male or female. 
uh, volunteers that I'd met over there, um, or within Free the Children, actually. Uh, it's uh, a very uh, woman-loving organization, <laughs> I have to say. Well, Craig's a self-proclaimed feminist. Um, that's not news. But uh, yeah, so being over there was no, it was like a really holistic experience and I felt, uh, um, you know, obviously within different cultures there are different roles that men and women play that might be unique, you know. Um, but that's the, the great thing is when you go, if you were to go on a meet a wee trip, you'd kind of, you'd learn about all that too, right? And you get educated about all that and you'd come back with a deeper understanding. I mean, I have to admit, you know, my first time to Kenya, learning about Maasai culture, it's very foreign to me, you know, this idea of even um, the family, um, family structure in terms of, you know, husbands and wives and children and the way the members of the family are counted and the way that works. So when you first go somewhere foreign as a visitor, you're quick to judge, right? You have all these preconceived notions in your mind. And then the more friends you make and the more places you see, and the more things you learn, your mind gets more open and open and open. And I feel like that's where real change takes place. And uh, that's been a beautiful thing. So yeah, I hope some of you get to experience it, but just the same, I'm sure you're experiencing that when you start a new project with your school. It could be local. I mean, I just saw the kids, uh, Kitchener, uh, in Kitchener, uh, a group of kids started uh, help, homelessness everywhere. Uh, What's the last? Oh, it was it's help. H E L P. It's like to see or like out of sight or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's this idea. There, these kids from Kitchener at a school that's here at We Day today. They started a campaign called Help H E L P, and it's for homelessness. And the whole idea is they're videotaping friends they meet on the street, are members of our community, right? Because we're all we all belong to the same communities. So they're stopping on the street and talking. Uh, homeless members of the community and kind of trying to open people's minds like these are real people with real stories and some of them are really nice and we've made some friends here so so that's kind of the same idea as what I'm talking about is when you culturally start um, opening your mind I think the same thing can happen in your backyard or on your street you know just take the time to like look at things from a different perspective and then you might learn something new that's the me to we I think philosophy really okay great yeah. question right here Your Hi there, my name is uh, Marguerite Abbott and I am one of the bloggers that you've reached out to. Uh, first and foremost, I have to thank you. And I'm gonna thank you because two years ago, my daughter went to a uh, wee day in Toronto. I'm from London, Ontario. Awesome. And uh, she was so inspired. Oh gosh, I'm gonna start crying. She was so inspired that Do this it. summer, <laughs> she <laughs> spent uh, two weeks in Ecuador with three children. Thank you. So it has um, changed her life. She is in grade 12 now, and she's looking to see how she can go um, into working for Free the Children or something in within world development. Fabulous. Thank so you. thank you for that. Um, and I've also brought my youngest daughter um, because I wanted her to experience we did. So I'm very lucky. This is my second. I went to Toronto, and I'm here. And I know how you've inspired my children, and I love what I'm seeing here. But I'm asking you, what do you want from us, from the parents, from my generation? I know what you want to do with the new generation, but what, what are you looking for from us? That's, that is the most unique and unusual and thought-provoking questions that have come from this. This is not a traditional We Day press conference. Yeah, you normally get questions like, so what's Sean Desmond like? You know, and they're, they're a little bit different in, in tone and voice. Uh, there is something in the water in the Waterloo region that's amazing. What do we look for parents for? You know, I, I believe the most powerful people in the world are not CEOs or politicians, they are parents. Because how you raise a child, that's the only true lasting legacy in the world. How you shape how one young person looks at the world. And with that is an enormous responsibility. We live in an age where so often schools teach about reading, writing, arithmetic, of course, but we have to teach about compassion and courage and community. So this is why we look to you as parents let your schools know that this is important to support service learning in schools, to support character education as part of nurturing the whole child, to support this as, as how you spend time with kids, you know, signing your kids up for sports, incredibly important, music, part of a well-rounded childhood, but so is service, so is volunteerism. As a parent, 
that's an enormous responsibility to bring this to a young person, and that is part of a well-rounded childhood. You know, and, and that is an enormous responsibility of the parents who come here and volunteer. We're honored to welcome, you know, we have about 600 volunteers in various capacities who help at a typical wee day, sometimes all the way up to 1,000, depending on the size. Those are parents, they're teachers who bring them, they're community leaders. You know, we had Andrew McLeod from, uh, McLeod, pardon me, from Blackberry who was on stage saying, why is he supporting this? He's a father. He has two children in this community. That's why Blackberry is giving back to their community. So the, the whole idea is we look for parents to prioritize this in schools, in teachable moments with children, in extracurriculars, that this is part of a well-rounded childhood.